Rolls Royce, Aston Martin, Jaguar, Bentley. We are at the modern classic rally brought to you by Autocar India. And today we have some absolutely spectacular cars to show you. Yes, this is the second edition of the Autocar India modern classic rally. And boy, oh boy, do we have some fantastic cars here. Nothing less than automotive excellence at its finest. Organized by Autocar India and presented by British Stein Tires in association with Gulf Oil and Autoglim, the lineup includes 55 landmark cars and a dozen or so era defining bikes. A collection that would make any automotive museum proud. There's just so much to see here cool designs, brilliant little details some fantastic dashboards and loads and loads of different engines and of course exhaust notes but stop wait what exactly is a modern classic now everyone's definition is a bit different but here's the curator so for me a modern classic is something that is around four decades old very rare the rarer the better of course all kinds of body styles come under the modern classic definition my favorites are the coupes and the cabriolets and uh, for me the most exciting modern classics are the gts so modern classics in general are cars that are between 10 and 50 years old and this includes all types coupes convertibles sedans hatchbacks sports cars SUVs and even cars that adorned our walls and imaginations back in the day. Let's start with a car I absolutely adore. Now this is a traditional Bentley in the true sense of the word and it's named Brooklyn's after the track that made their cars famous. What's unique is this engine makes a thousand nm of torque. Now this Brooklyn's here is also famous because of its coupe body style and despite it being bulky and big there's a certain elegance to it that just makes it unforgettable now from one brit legend to another the jaguar e-type now two of the most alluring cars here they're both v12s and they both belong to the same owner and of course they're both in the same color these series 3 e-types wowed the crowds with their voluptuous curves and spot-on proportions and having driven one of these, I can tell you, few engines are smoother than Jaguar's V12. Tell us in the comments below which one you would choose. On to another British legend, Rolls Royce. So this is the last Rolls Royce sold by Vickers, the company that owned it for a long time. Now it's gone into the hands of BMW. And as you can see, it's a typical Rolls Royce design, but it was really attractive in its day. They rounded off this grille, which was much sharper earlier, and a nice, slightly more sporty design. On the inside, it has all the wood, leather, and chrome lime charm you can imagine. Now, we're used to seeing all sorts of buttons and controls on modern cars today, but take a look at this panel here. It's hidden and has some pretty nifty buttons. What I want to show you next is one of the prettiest parts of the car. Yes, it's that BMW sourced V12. Just look at it. Now, on to another Rolls. Now, Rolls Royce's Phantom Drophead Coupe just has to be one of the most indulgent cars ever. Now, this is personal transportation, the car you drive yourself. And this aluminium finish, the manner in which this wood paneling goes all the way to the rear, and you have this yacht-like finish in the back. It just makes this car extra special. Up ahead, something quite different. Now this is the Ferrari Mondial. It's the four-seater Ferrari and it's the QV. It's a quattro valve, four valves per cylinder back in the day. And absolutely gorgeous wedge shape. It's when Pininfarina made all the Ferraris. 
With its four-seater layout, the transversely mounted mid-engine helps packaging and look closely at the air inlet behind the doors and you can see where Ferrari started with the strakes or horizontal slats that became so iconic on cars like the Testarossa. Only 152 right-hand drive versions of this car were made, so it is pretty rare. But what does owner him and Choksi have to say? It's one of the rarest ones which Ferrari ever made because it's a 2 plus 2 with a mid-engine and uh, I own it since the last 20 years now. It's been a task to maintain it, but it's finally getting back on the road. Now, Aston Martin's always been a brand that's been led by design. And I mean, just look at this. Can you take your eyes off this car, that hooded, menacing Cobra kind of look? Now, around the side, you can see the lines. The way this coupe body has this beautiful fastback at the rear. And what I absolutely love is the design of these tail lights. Also something interesting, if you can come forward, this badge here says David Brown, Aston Martin. It's the DB years, it's where DB comes from. Upwards and onwards and onto one of the most forward looking cars ever. Now this is the Goddess, the DS, the Citroen DS. Probably the most innovative car ever produced. It took more than a decade to make it. Uh, the unique parts are all over, but the hydro pneumatic suspension, that makes it pretty special. It didn't have a very powerful engine, but it actually won a lot of rallies. The Citroen DS previewed more automotive future tech than any car before it. Owner Vivek Goenka says he just loves this car and he has a huge collection. Well, I, among my collection, uh, the Citroen DS is one of my favourites. Uh, simply because it's a very unique car, a very unusual car designed with some very interesting uh, objectives in mind. They said that you should have, we should have a car where a glass of water doesn't spill when you drive on a paddy field. That was the brief given when this car was built. And the strange part is, you know, this car has uh, multiple levels of suspension in its uh, hydro pneumatics. And um, uh, it also can run on three wheels, which very few people know. You can remove any one back wheel and the car will run safely on three wheels. Now I'm not four feet tall, but this is the F-150 and in this matte black color and the red interior, I think it just looks absolutely mad. It just shows the variety and richness of cars here today and I think the design is absolutely stunning. The matte black and raised Ford 150 looks like a carefully chiseled battering ram and dwarfs almost every car here. Made for the US Army to replace the Jeep, AM General's Humvee has since gone on to serve many countries, almost 60 of them. But even by Humvee standards, this one is a bit special. This is Humvee. Humvee is high mobility, multi-purpose wheeled vehicle. This is the 1995 model, first right-hand drive made up to now. Now Alfa Romeo all but invented the performance sedan and here you can see part of that genesis in the blue Giulia 1300 and the white 2000 Berlina. Both had twin cam engines, twin carburetors and loads of performance for the day. They were everyday fun cars and that at the time was rare. In possession of one of the highest revving naturally aspirated engines of its time, the Honda S2000 is a true icon. The shape is immediately recognizable and drive the car and you know why Honda builds some of the greatest engines ever. This Audi 100 was won by Ravi Shastri at the World Championship of Cricket in 1985. Remember the team sitting on the car as they drove around during the victory lap? This one is it. Recently restored by Gautam Singhania Supercar Club Garage, it sits alongside a straight six powered BMW 325i that belonged to the ex sheriff of Bombay, Jangu Nicholson. Do you know who owns the car now? Tell us in the comments below. The modern classic movement today also includes bikes, another growing segment. Present at the show were a raft of iconic Hondas, an early Goldwing with a wetter aftermarket fairing, 
Honda's legendary inline fours, a 550 and a 750, a Kawasaki ZXR 750, Honda's Africa Twin, and the toast of all of these, an Indian chief that just blew everyone away. Also present with their range of tyres on display were premium tyre maker Vredestein. Synonymous with premium styling and ultra high performance, important factors for luxury car owners, Vredestein were delighted to be part of this event that closely resonates with their 110 year old legacy. Gulf also had a retro theme stall with their race winning sponsored cars put up in the background. Shom Hinduja, crew president at Gulf, spoke of the heritage of the brand. And really happy to be a part of uh, uh, this event because Gulf has sponsored uh, such events across uh, different geographies since 1901. So the heritage of racing with Gulf uh, is, is what you can see here today. And uh, really excited to see and be a part of this event. UK-based premium car car maker Auto Glim also displayed some fascinating products, many of which owners at the event plan to use in the future. The modern classic rally was flagged off in Mumbai from the Grand Hyatt by Mumbai BJP President and MLA Ashish Shelar. The first car of the blocks, a 500 SEC and Mercs formed the backbone of this movement. The rally also consisted of several V8 powered Merc SLs, especially the R129 made on a shortened W124 platform. And we asked Shane Shah what he likes best about his car. So I think uh, just the feel of the open top driving and uh, you know the, the nostalgia factor of uh, when these cars, uh, you know, being 90s poster uh, cars, I think that's, that's very exciting. And of course, being part of such a great community that modern classics is. Kapil Kuelkar also told us why he loves this 380 SL. This is my the favorite car and the jewel of my collection because it just takes me back. It's a two-door convertible and it's really hard to have one of these in Bombay with the weather. But this is just the, the most gorgeous car I have. The Grand Hyatt in Mumbai was thrilled to host the modern classic rally. With its grand spaces and amenities, it helped provide an ideal setting and draw enthusiasts, many of whom are the who's who of the modern classic community. Among the muscle cars present was an orange Plymouth Barracuda, a Ford Mustang Mark I, and Merck's modern day muscle car, the 6.3 litre SLS AMG, the one with the gullwing doors. Also part of the rally, a very rare Nissan R33, the father of the Nissan GTR, and an ex-Salman Khan BMW M5, the E39, the one with the V8 that made 400 horsepower and 500 Nm of torque. This one was the first one in the country, and this car could do 300 km an hour back in 1998. The rally even had some cool SUVs and a town ace van. Love that first gen Range Rover. Yes, it's a first gen. It came with four doors as well. So that's it. That's the wrap. And here's looking forward to seeing more of you at the rally next year.